Hey guys, Michael Corsentino for Shutter Magazine. This month I want to talk to you about squeezing every last bit of productivity and uh, possibility out of your lighting modifiers, especially new modifiers that you uh, that you bring in uh, to your studio, to your workflow. Uh, I titled this month's article One Modifier Four Ways, but in reality that really is just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, with what's possible uh, for a lot of modifiers depending on the uh, various options that are available for them. Uh, they, you know, they will vary from modifier to modifier, but it really, four is just a basic number, uh, just something to kind of keep it reined in uh, and to make the title kind of snappy. But as you'll see as we move through this uh, behind the scenes video and in the article, uh, you know, I stopped after 34 different looks and I could have kept on going, but it was two in the morning by the time, by that point. So we stopped, but the point, the big takeaway is just that there are just a ton of ways to use each of your light modifiers. And I think what happens uh, oftentimes, I know it happens, it's happened with me, um, is that you, you know, you get a new light modifier and you're really excited about it. It's kind of the flavor of, of the minute and you set it up and you shoot with it. Uh, and then, you know, we get comfortable shooting with it in that particular way, whatever way we're using it with, you know, the interior and exterior baffle, or maybe we're using it bare, however we're using it, uh, you know, it works and we get kind of stuck in a rut and we just use it that particular way. And the argument that I would make, and I think you'll agree after you see this video and you read the article, is that we're leaving a lot on the table insofar as what's possible uh, with each of our modifiers, that we, if we take the time to really explore the, the various ways you can use each modifier, how you can modify them themselves and how you can reposition them and do different things with them, you'll see that they have a lot more utility than you may be giving them credit for. And you may need to, you, you may be able to hold off and not bring in as many new pieces of equipment, but really get more utility out of what you already have uh, or what you bring in uh, each time and really explore the possibilities for each of those modifiers. So what you see here are the four different looks that we featured in the article and I'm going to show you uh, each variation as well uh, that comprised the 35 different looks that uh, that I created. So. And some of those are going to be really subtle and some of them are going to be more dramatic than others. But nonetheless, each a different look with each with, you know, varying degrees of different qualities and attributes. So you'll see here the four different looks. Uh, and let's take a look at the modifier. This is a, the great case in point for really going through this exercise of exploring each of the ways that you can use a modifier. So what is bringing in a new modifier? And the perfect case in point for that is the, this modifier that I just brought into the studio. Uh, it's an Ellen Chrome uh, light motive. Uh, it's the larger of the two that are available in the, in the parabola size, um, in the parabola uh, version, uh, I should say. Uh, it's the 190 uh, centimeter, and for those of you not uh, up on your metrics, that's uh, a little over six feet, about six feet two inches. So a really large modifier, uh, really deep modifier. I think it's about four feet deep. Um, so just a ton of coverage, uh, great head to toe light uh, for fashion, uh, great for portraits, just great for a, a variety of things given its size and the uh, amount of coverage that it has. Also you'll note the um, facets uh, on it. Um, I'll get my markup layer here. You'll see that each of the facets here, it's 16 sides, so it creates a really gorgeous catch light. Uh, and the new fabric inside of it is also a lot more efficient than some of the older, uh, in this new line, I should say, of light motives. It's a more efficient fabric. So for those people using monopods, uh, mono heads, uh, it's more efficient. It pumps out a little bit more light, makes it easier for you to use lower, lower watt second lighting heads. Uh, than you might traditionally need to use in a larger modifier like this. Um, also, you'll see here the various ways that you can use it straight out of the box. So let's take a look at that. Let's we can get rid of this. Let's just get rid of these marks. Uh, so you can see here the three different ways um, that we can use this. We can use it um, unmodified, which has no diffusion on it at all. Um, shooting uh, with the light head mounted on the back. And I think I have a slide about how that yeah, like that. That's how you light the uh, the head in there. So it's a direct unit, meaning that the light head fires directly toward your subject into the box, not uh, not back towards. It's not a bounce back. Um, then the second variation that we have here is uh, with an interior diffusion panel, and you can see that here. And that is going to soften the interior hot spot, and it's going to um, bounce the light back and and kind of create a lot of reflection here. 
uh, just softens the light, creates a broader source, um, and gives you a softer quality of light. It also cuts about a third of a stop of light uh, coming out from your light head. Um, next, we've got the exterior diffusion panel, which you see here. Again, that's going to cut another third stop of light. It's going to create a much broader source, a much softer source, and when I say softer, I mean less contrast, softer transitions between highlights um, and shadows. Uh, and then we can, of course, use both the interior uh, panel baffle here and the exterior diffusion panel here together, which is why I've put this little plus sign here. So you can see we've got um, one, two, three different ways that we can use it sort of straight out of the box. Um, and then additionally to that, so that's, that's three looks right there, okay, before we've even done anything. Um, then we've got these, uh, in the case of Ellen Chrome, uh, they have these things called deflectors, which uh, you've probably seen if you use a beauty dish. Uh, basically it mounts in front of the um, flash tube and it softens the light uh, and blocks it and you know bounces it back into the box and then reflects it back out in a softer way. Uh, and they've got these in various um, iterations. They've got this in gold, they've got it in a frost, they've got it in a silver and a white. Uh, and we'll look more in depth at those in a minute. Uh, but each, again, so here we've got one, two, three, and then we've got four, five, six, seven different possibilities. Or let's see, let's use uh, unmodified is one, two, so white, three, silver, four, frosted, five, um, with gold. So the five different ways that we can use it just with these three different variations here. Okay. Um, also for pro photo shooters, anyone using a pro head, it's just worth mentioning as I use pro heads, also pro photo pro heads, um, that the umbrella receptacle that this little rod here goes into, uh, you also can use it with a pro photo pro head. You can't use it with any of the D series heads. Um, but if you were considering getting this and you're a pro photo shooter, you can use this on a, with a pro photo, but it's limited to the pro heads because of the way the uh, orientation of the umbrella receptacle. So anyway, just a side note for pro photo folks. Um, okay, so let's get rid of this and this, and let's talk a little bit more about these deflectors. All right, let me just close this here. Okay, so as I said, each of these deflectors is going to give you a different... Uh, effect. So the white is going to cut uh, about a stop of light out, okay, so that's uh, minus one stop. It's also going to soften the light, it's going to soften the shadows, it's going to give you a more diffuse look uh, because you're not going to have as much of a direct light source, right? Uh, the frosted is going to give you minus a half a stop, okay, so a little bit less of effect, a little, little more specularity, a little more contrast, a little deeper shadow, a little sharper shadow, but a way to modulate the light, make it a little bit softer than uh, a bare bulb effect, okay. Uh, then we've got the silver, which is going to block uh, everything. It's going to, you know, totally block the light. I'm not sure. I think it's a, uh, minus a stop of light also. Uh, don't don't quote me on that. But in any event, it blocks all the light directly from the bulb. It bounces it back with, and it's uh, a completely silver effect, so it's giving you more specularity than, let's say, the white. Okay. Same with the gold. Uh, the gold also, I believe, minus one, and the gold is going to uh, mix with the silver and give you a warmer kind of a bronze tone effect. All right. Um, so just some things to think about when you're working with these. We're going to look at all these. We, I did uh, one of each for each of the different ways to shoot with this modifier. Okay, so let's get rid of that stuff. So to start with, one of the ways we can shoot with this, and one of the ways that's going to affect what we're doing with any modifier, and again, I, this is not an ad for Ellen Chrome, this is, but this was just a good case in point because it's a new modifier that I brought in, and I really wanted to take the time to explore all the possibilities for this modifier and see just how, what, how much stuff I could do with it. And this is going to be true of any modifier. I don't care whether it's a beauty dish or a softbox or a strip bank or whatever. There are various ways to modify each of these things. So one of the ways that you can... Uh, you know, obviously change the quality of the light is the way that we're going to position the light relative to our subject. Okay, so here you're seeing it unmodified, and I've got this circle around the uh, model just showing that basically you've got this entire arc around the subject where, that you can place the light, and that's going to create a very different effect, a very different quality of light. We only explored two um, variations on this theme, uh, one directly shooting uh, toward the model, and then one from the side, from, from one side at one specific angle, but you've just got a ton, basically 300 
160 different degrees worth of options at your disposal. So definitely, you know, check out the different ways that you can do that. And of course, the deflectors, I've got them pictured here as well. All right. So again, and then we've got the interior uh, baffle shown here. Uh, and then the exterior baffle, and then of course, you know, both of them together, right? And I've got that pictured there. So, uh, you know, that's one of the ways to use it, or actually, you know, three of the ways to use it from the side, and then another, modifying each one of those ways with the deflectors. So you can see how all of a sudden it just starts to add up to a ton of different ways uh, to use this uh, or any modifier. Okay, uh, this specifically because it, it is such a large um, modifier gives you the opportunity to shoot in front of it uh, and what happens is the light is just going to wrap around you uh, and you're not really going to block the light and, you, and it just gives a really beautiful light, a head-to-toe light for the subject. So uh, any modifier that is really large, uh, this one is as I say above six feet, it's just going to give you the opportunity to shoot in front of it. So that's another way to um, to shoot with this modifier, uh, and um, one of the ways I wanted to explore, and of course within that, now again you're seeing it here bare, uh, I was also able to of course then bring in the interior baffle, uh, and then the exterior baffle, and then of course again both together, and then for each of those, again, trying variations with the white, the silver, the frost, and the gold deflector. So again, it just really starts to get dizzying and just to be a ton of different uh, options to work with, which is why you really want to be analytical and clinical about the whole thing. Uh, and I would have my, uh, my model hold up a piece of paper uh, between when I would change each different look and, you know, uh, marked on the piece of paper would say exactly what I was doing, whether it was with a diffuser, without the diffuser, bare bulb, uh, interior and exterior baffle, etc, etc. So this way, in post, I was able to keep track of it and figure out and remember exactly what I had done and see the resulting effect. Um, we're going to take a look at that as well. All right. So uh, one of the other really unique things about this modifier is the fact that you can shoot through the back of it, okay, which is really great. Now, of course, you can shoot behind other modifiers, but with this particular modifier, uh, you have the opportunity to uh, actually stand behind it, and you can see here that uh, I've given you a little picture showing you where you can stick your lens through. You can take off this skirt behind the modifier and peel it back and stick a lens through any different part of that 360 degree circle that you've got there. So you've got some real opportunities to create some different angles or different heights and, and positions and stuff within that. Uh, and here you can see the illustration of um, a photographer shooting through the back. So again, a different look, a different effect, a more specular kind of look. Uh, you know, we're gonna, and I'm going to show you the results and what you know what that uh, looks like when you use it. So again, just again another possibility. So it, you know, just just amazing how many different ways there are to work with uh, modifiers. Uh, let's turn this off and now let's take a look at some of the specific results that we featured in the article. The four shots that I chose as my four finals to really highlight in the article. So with this one, uh, this image was created. Uh, and I love, this is one of my absolute favorites from this session uh, because it's just so soft and creamy and beautiful and it's got detail in the shadows. Um, it's got a lovely wraparound light. Um, so how did I create that and why does it look that way? Well, let's take a look at the position of the, uh, of the softbox, the Octobank. And the, first of all, uh, this illustration is just a product shot. So you're seeing it kind of facing the camera. It was actually not facing the camera. It was at about the same angle, but facing the background and facing toward the model. Okay. But the real, the important thing to remember here, the big takeaway is you see this line here, this line, that line indicates the back of the softbox, okay? And you can see the model is behind that, actually is behind that. So what's happening is I'm feathering the light. So I'm getting this really beautiful soft light by not working with her right here in the center, okay? That I don't want for this effect. I want her behind the light. I want her working with all the stuff that's happening here, 
right behind it and it just creates this gorgeous wrap a very soft light a very it's direct but it's not as directional it's not directly from the center there's no super hard hot spot happening uh, but because I'm not working with the exterior baffle in place as well or both of them together interior and exterior diffusion I should say um, I'm getting a little bit more punch I'm getting more contrast than I would if both of them were in place I'm getting a nice crispy kind of light um, but I'm uh, but I'm not getting uh, that direct harsh light that I don't want. I'm getting the kind of the best of both worlds. It's got some contrast, but it's got beautiful softness. It's got a beautiful highlight, a catch light in the eyes, um, owing to again these uh, 16 facets. It is it's just a gorgeous catch light right here. Absolutely beautiful. Here's that catch light. I just wanted you guys to see it. It's uh, just beautiful right there you can see all the facets from the uh, inside the box uh, inside the uh, light motive uh, and again you can kind of make out the interior baffle there and you can see the little sprockets uh, of the box just gorgeous let me get rid of that again so you can just see that without any markings on it yeah so that's what the catch light looks like I love that look I think it's beautiful uh, so there you have it Okay, next image is a shot that I made using the interior and exterior baffle. Again, Ashley is behind behind the uh, modifier, giving me a diffused, giving me a feathered light. Okay, again that feathered effect where we're getting we're working with the edge of the light, which is super important. Uh, definitely encourage you to try that. Uh, much more pleasing than having the subject directly in front of the light source because it's going to give you're going to have much more of a hot spot if you if you do that. Uh, additionally, I placed a uh, reflector, a white California sun bounce reflector camera right, and that just helped to open up all the shadows on this side of the face and give me a little bit more uh, tooth in the fabric on this side. Again, I love shadows, but it's just a different variation, another way to use that one modifier that we have to create a different look. Okay, a very different look. Here's our look before, right, and how we did it. How we use the modifier, interior baffle only, and now interior and exterior baffle with a light modifier, I mean with a reflector rather, uh, in there as well. Okay. All right, next up is shooting through the back. Okay, this is the third image that we highlighted in the article, and I produced this image by shooting through the modifier from behind. Uh, with absolutely no diffusion, interior or exterior, and no deflectors, just bare bulb. And you can see where I've got this really contrasty look. You can also see the uh, shadows here. Got a nice kind of defined shadow behind the model, almost kind of like a ring flash effect. Got a round, hard catch light in the eyes. Uh, almost a shadowless kind of light on the face. Got a shadow under the chin. Uh, but a real nice kind of fashion uh, high key effect. All right, so that is shooting from behind. And this was also uh, done close, okay? I investigated shooting uh, this way far as well as close. And we're going to take a look at all of those variations as well. Uh, and the next one was um, shooting in front and shooting far, okay? So now I'm about 15 feet from the subject. Uh, I have uh, interior baffle and exterior diffusion happening there, uh, and I'm standing in front. Okay, so another way to use this modifier. Uh, and, uh, among many, as we're seeing, that there's just a ton of ways to use each of your modifiers. So again, not to belabor the point, but I can't say it enough. Uh, it was really a great exercise to remind me just, you know, uh, how much I probably have been leaving on the table with each of my modifiers. Um, okay, so that's another really cool look. Let's turn this off. And now let's take a look at all of these geeked out variations, okay, where we really got clinical and we, uh, this is exactly where I pulled the four looks that we featured large in the piece from, but I wanted to show you each of the variations that made up the comprised the 34 different looks. So here you can see I'm shooting in front. It's undiffused. Uh, you can see the, um, let me make sure I'm on my marker player here. I've got the undiffused. This is with no deflectors. And here we move from the translucent uh, or frosted, I think they call it, uh, to the white, to the silver, 
to the gold. Okay, that's one. I'll, I'll leave that up for a minute so you guys can check it out or you can feel free to freeze the video. Um, and let's move on. Next, we've got interior baffle shooting in front. Again, this is the same exact thing. I just put an interior baffle inside of it. And you can see here how, again, that look changes. Things get a little softer. The shadows get a little softer. The look gets a little less contrasty. Uh, we start to modify and control the light, right? Uh, so again, uh, same exact uh, progression. We move through the uh, no deflector to the frost, to the white, to the silver, and the gold. You can see here that I didn't mention this before, but that gold gives a nice kind of bronzing effect to the skin. And you can see exactly the same kind of effects. It just ends up, it's one, another layer of softness, another layer of diffusion that you're adding as you move through these different ways to modify it the dish. Okay, next is uh, exterior diffusion shooting in front. Okay, so uh, again I put just the exterior diffusion on the front of the box and now I am again, the progression again, same, same as before, is uh, no deflector with the frost, with the white, the silver, and with the gold. Right? And you want to pay attention to the shadows and the contrast, and of course in the gold the case of a warmer tone, by about 200 to 300 degrees Kelvin, I believe, is, is what that gives you. Um, okay, and we're almost through with these. Uh, the next one is both the interior and exterior diffusion panels, and again shooting in front, and again shooting uh, far, 15 feet, I believe is what I was at, about 15 to 16 feet. Um, and uh, again, We've got uh, just uh, bare, no deflector rather. Uh, we've got the frost and the white and the silver and the gold. And next up is shooting through the back. Uh, and I did this uh, far and close. Um, so let's take a look here at the, you can see a different quality of light. We've got a kind of a harder look, a more specular look. Again, the further away the light source gets, even with a large source like this, we're gonna have a little bit more of a contrasty light, a harder light, harder shadows. Um, so let's take a look at that. Here is our bare bulb, no diffusion at all. Here is our uh, frosted deflector, white, silver, and gold, and you can see her skin gets a little warmer tone to it, a little bronzing effect. Uh, and again, that is with absolutely uh, no diffusion, because of course we're shooting from the back, we're shooting through it, we can't really have any diffusion, so it doesn't really apply in this case. Um, next is the same thing, shooting from behind, but now we're shooting close. Okay, so now our contrast is going to get more intense. Uh, the specularity is going to get more intense, the, the harshness of the light source is going to get more intense. Uh, again, we have no diffusion happening here, uh, so the only way that we're going to be able to kind of modulate the quality of light is by using those deflectors. So you see it here with uh, just bare bulb, you see it here with the frost and the white and the silver and the gold. Right? Okay, uh, then the other way that we uh, played with it was from the side. Okay, and now those are, obviously, when we move it to the side, we're going to introduce shadow. So a very different look, not so much of a fashion look, um, or catalog kind of fashion look, but uh, more of a portrait -y. Uh, you know, this has applications for fashion as well, but just a different kind of look. You guys get what I mean. Uh, not so much a catalog look, uh, not the, the, you know, the white seamless look. Um, so here we are, of course, able to modulate what's going on with the uh, color tone of our background. We've changed it. This is still the white sweep, but we've now changed it by virtue of the position of the light to a, you know, a gray background just by moving our light. All right. So let's look at the four ways that we've got the uh, light uh, modifier used here. So here we talked before about feathering the light and, uh, you know, as opposed to not feathering it. So I wanted to show you uh, and I wanted to see what it looks like as it, you know, shot directly. And I'm not saying, don't get me wrong, sometimes direct light is what you want, but uh, I wanted to show you each of the variations and I wanted to test each of the variations and see direct light from one modifier is going to be different than direct light from another. So I wanted to see what that d looked like from this modifier. Uh, so you can see here the dotted line goes behind our model, so that means that she's in front where she's getting lit directly from the middle of the box. 
uh, and this is the result. Okay, so you can see here, you know, when you, you want to pay attention to the highlights and shadows, the transitions between them, um, the quality of the contrast, uh, how things fall, how rapidly light falls off, etc. Those are going to be kind of your telltale signs to look for. And if you like that, then fine. And if you want something different, if you want a softer look, then of course you're going to feather the light, which is our bottom, uh, our bottom left look. Okay, so we just talked about our uh, top left. Now we're talking about bottom left and we we're feathering the light and we're using this unmodified also. These two looks are both unmodified. They have no diffusion interior or exterior. It's just bare bulb, no deflectors either. All right, so now the change that I've made is I've left everything exactly the same but I've just moved my model behind the light, right? And I've got her working in the feathered portion of the light. So you can see her things start to soften up. Now we're still working with an, uh, a bare source so the light is definitely more contrasty than it would be if it was diffused, but it is softer. It's a little hard to tell from these photos, but trust me, if you try this yourself, you'll see it is much softer uh, than uh, if you use the light directly. Okay, so over here on the right, top right, we added in uh, a, it, the interior baffle. And again, we're still working feathered. We added in the interior baffle, and you can see here that... Um, we've got a softer quality of light now. Uh, we've got a, uh, we also have, uh, I talked about this in the article, I believe, we've got a nice um, kind of raking of the light happening on the background where we're going from darker to lighter vertically. So uh, all of this is kind of darker than this and it kind of splits right down the center, which I like because this side of her face is lighter and this side of her face is darker. So we've got this opposing, you know, uh, highlight to shadow, shadow to highlight kind of thing happening on the background, which uh, I really like. Um, so that's that's one of the nice things, and you're going to have to kind of control that by how far you move your uh, modifier away from the background. But that worked out really nicely. Uh, again, we've got a light that is soft, but not too soft because we're not using both interior and exterior diffusion panels. We're only using the interior, so we've still got that contrast. We've got that, we're able to, you know, use... Um, see the facets uh, in the catch lights in her eyes because we're not covering those facets and it makes again a beautiful catch light. Um, so anyway just a different way to use it and then finally over here on bottom right we're using both interior and exterior for, an, uh, for the maximum kind of uh, diffused softened light. We're also again feathering that light again to increase that softness of light and I'm using a reflector on the right to bounce light and to fill light over here on this side and you can see the effect that it also has on the background. We end up with a much more evenly lit background. There's a lot more light bouncing around in the studio doing this. All right, so that wraps it up. That's where we stop. But again, I really, I just could have kept on going. Uh, there's just so much that you can do uh, with each modifier. So I really do encourage you to investigate your modifiers. And I just wanted to show you what this looked like in post. Uh, you can see in um, these shots that Ashley is holding up a piece of paper, which is uh, a printout kind of indicating exactly which way I was using the modifier, whether it had the internal or external baffle or both, or uh, whether it was using a deflector, etc., where it was positioned, what I was doing, whether it was behind it or in front of it, etc. So just a good way to keep track of what you're doing and how you're doing it. Again, so here are the basically the uh, four looks. Here's that catch that I ended up kind of calling out and highlighting, but it. you can yeah, see here that so there are just a ton of possibilities uh, with each of your modifiers. There. So I encourage you to get out there and the try uh, and the, really squeeze uh, as much as possible out of your uh, modifiers. The, uh, Investigate uh, their uh, many, many uses. Kind of I think you'll find that um, perhaps there are ways, undiscovered ways to use them that you haven't investigated. So that's going to wrap it up for this month. Until next time, this has been Michael yeah, Corsentino for Shutter it. Magazine. Yeah. So uh, don't forget to uh, post your like. questions I and comments on look. Facebook. I'm happy to help you guys out when I can. Uh, so and I will see you next time.